Today we're learning how to draw using one point perspective and you don't need many materials to do this and you probably already have them in your house. So to be successful today, you'll need a white piece of paper, any kind of paper will do, even if it's a lined piece of paper, a ruler, a pencil, make sure you have some sort of an eraser just in case you make mistakes. And if you're interested in tracing your drawing or coloring when we're done, you might want to have some Sharpies or black permanent markers handy. And for coloring today, I will be coloring my drawing with colored pencils, but you can use whatever coloring medium you have at home. Okay, artists, let's get started. For today's video, Mrs. Horst from fourth grade is joining us. Hi, Mrs. Horst. Thanks for stopping by the arting room. We enjoy having you. We're going to be drawing one point perspective today, and that honestly means we're going to be drawing one point on our piece of paper. We want to make sure that when we draw this point, we want it in the top third of our paper. Now you can measure this. Um, you can fold your paper over, however you want to figure out where that point goes, or you can just eyeball it. It doesn't have to be perfect. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure halfway on my paper with my finger, and then I'm going to measure one third of the way up my paper, and my point is gonna go right about here. You can fold your paper, you can eyeball it, you can measure it, it doesn't have to be perfect. Now I am going to draw a straight line on my paper from the point to the corner of my paper at the bottom. Um, if you don't have a ruler at home, you can use some sort of straight edge like maybe a magazine or a cereal box. And now I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Now this is just a practice drawing, so if it's not perfect, that's okay. It's also why we're drawing lightly and using a pencil. So if that we make a mistake, we can go back and easily fix it. Okay, so the next thing I wanna do is um, draw a horizon line. And the horizon line is the part of my drawing where the land is gonna meet the sky. If I was drawing a scene of a uh, fruit bowl, it would be the line where the table meets the wall. So it's just gonna divide up my paper so that the viewer knows what they're looking at more easily. And that is gonna go straight across my vanishing point, which is my one point perspective. This is the point in which everything vanishes. That's why we call it a vanishing point. This is a one point perspective drawing. We can draw multiple points of perspective and then that would be called a two point or a three point perspective. We're sticking with the one point perspective today. Okay, so these are the basic lines you need to include. And from here, it's totally optional what you draw. I'm gonna be making our triangle section a road. And then on the sides, I'm gonna be drawing trees. And in the background, I'm going to be drawing a nature scene. But yours can be however you want. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do to turn my road into an actual road is I'm gonna draw a line right next door using from the vanishing point down to the end of my paper. And I'm just going to measure, or you can eyeball, mine looks about two inches. I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side to keep things nice and even Steven. And this is just a practice, so it's okay if it's not perfect. Now these are gonna be sidewalks that are next to my street. So what I wanna do is I wanna make some lines dividing my sidewalk. Um, I'm gonna have the lines be further apart down towards the bottom of my paper and closer together um, once I get closer to my vanishing point so it'll kind of tell my viewer that things are getting further away. So they are smaller and also further apart. So all I'm doing is just moving my ruler towards the vanishing point. And 
almost done because things will get really small. Oops, that's why we draw in pencil. I'm also drawing really light and I'm not worried about everything being super perfect because when I'm done with my drawing, um, I'm going to go over everything in Sharpie and then erase any mistakes or lines I no longer need. Okay, so that's for my sidewalk. And now I'm going to be drawing the lines that divide a road. To help me with this, I'm just going to draw from the vanishing point down to the bottom of my paper so that I know how to make the small little rectangle kind of dash lines in the middle of the road. So you can use a ruler to draw these or eyeball it. And I want to use the vanishing point too. So on the sides, I can show you the difference here. Um, so if I draw it straight up and down, I'm not really showing much perspective. I want to use my ruler to draw the sides from the vanishing point so things are more um, drawn with perspective. Now, if I had drawn it straight up and down, it might not show that much perspective. But it's your paper. You can draw it however you want. And I will go back and erase all the lines I don't need. So the lines I won't need anymore when I'm erasing are all of these ones. I'm only going to leave behind the dashed line in the middle of the road. So you can go through this and erase, or you can trace over everything with the Sharpie, which is my favorite thing to do, and then um, erase all the extra lines that you might have. All right, next step. Um, I'm going to draw the trees along the road. So if you are drawing, it, I'll draw two different types of trees. So you can draw a Christmas looking tree, so an evergreen, and you want these guys to be kind of large. And we're gonna start down here. And it's okay if they overlap, you can always go and erase this. If you don't like the way this tree looks, I'll draw a different kind over here. Now this one should be the largest, and then right here you want to draw one that's a bit smaller. Remember, we're trying to show perspective, so we want them to be different heights, with the largest objects being towards the bottom of our paper and the smallest objects being towards the vanishing point. And as you're drawing these trees, they should get smaller and smaller until you are way down here and you want the tree to be very very tiny almost like that um and that will show perspective and again erase any lines you don't need or you can trace over them with a sharpie the other type of tree that you can draw um is just a normal tree with a trunk. You can also include some branches to make it a little bit more realistic. So you want to draw the larger tree in the front towards the bottom of your paper. And then as you go, you want the trees to get a little bit smaller, just like this side of the paper. And if you're including branches, those should get smaller too. Until you're all the way over here when trees are very, very small. Okay, I'll be right back when I've drawn all my trees and I've erased any lines that I no longer need. All right, 
All I have left on my paper is the background. So I'm going to be drawing a background scene of nature, but you can include any type of background that you might want. Um, so I'm going to start here in the middle with a sun and I'm going to be giving my sun some rays because I do plan on coloring this picture and I can color these different warm colors and that would look really nice. Um, if you don't like what I'm drawing, you can personalize this drawing however you want. Um, sometimes just filling up the whole background with rays looks really nice. I'm going to be drawing some mountains back here. And then where these mountains overlap the horizon line that can be erased because I will not see the horizon line behind my mountains. And then I'm going to draw the same thing over here. But if you don't like the way this looks, you can include whatever you want in your background. And then where your mountains overlap, erase those lines because you don't need them. And I've tried to make my mountain ranges look a little bit different on both sides of the street, just so you can get a different look for different types. All right, and the last thing I'm gonna do is add some clouds to the sky. Okay, and now I'm done. The next step is I'm gonna trace everything using my permanent markers. I have an ultra fine and a fine point marker. Um, I'll use ultra fine on very tiny details that are closer to the vanishing point and the regular marker things away. Um, if you wanna keep um, your lines super straight, I suggest using a ruler. Um, and I'll be right back once this is done being traced over. Here's my drawing totally traced over with Sharpie. And now it looks like a coloring book page. Of course, you can leave your drawing just like this and be done. But now I'm gonna go ahead and use my colored pencils and finish coloring my drawing. And I'll be right back to show you what it looks like when I'm done. Here's my finished drawing. I've totally colored the whole thing in. Um, I have kept my vanishing point for my one point perspective drawing just so that you know where it was. I hope you really enjoyed today's drawing. I can't wait to see what you do and what personalized details that you include in your drawing. Don't forget to turn in a picture in Google Classroom and tag me on social media. Bye guys.